Hi everyone, this is Joanne Fink for Sakura. And although most of you know me from this Inspirations Patterning and Lettering and Color Create Pattern and Playbooks, I actually think of myself as a calligrapher because I've been lettering for more than 30 years. And today I want to share seven tips that will help you be successful at doing calligraphy. Today, what's really exciting is the Pigma Calligrapher. What's awesome about the Pigma Calligrapher is that it has a hard nylon tip. And no matter how long I use it, it always gives me a clean, crisp, delightful edge to write with. The exciting thing about the Pigma Calligrapher to me is that it has the same rich, dark, archival, waterproof ink that is in my all-time favorite tool, the Pigma Micron. And they come in three sizes. I've already lettered this with the uh, three millimeter. Let me show you what the two millimeter looks like in terms of size. So the two millimeter gives you a nice medium size writing. And then the one millimeter is awesome for place cards and any tiny projects. And I love to flourish with it. Let me show you how to hold the pen. You want to hold it almost perpendicular to the paper so that you can get the best line quality. Firm, even pressure is ideal. And notice how I'm moving my entire arm. You will get the best results from your lettering if your fingers are not planted here, but you're moving freely from your arm. Don't be afraid to push. You will not break the tool. And when you push on it, you can really see what the pen does. Break your pen in before trying to do letters with it. And we're going to do that by doing some pen patterns. There's a few that I tend to use all the time. One is a triangle pattern where I'm going up on a thin and down on a thick and just making a whole row of triangles. A second is what I call an S-curve. And it's called an S-curve because it's the shape that you make when you're doing an S. So that's a really good one to practice. And you can practice it vertically and horizontally. Another one that is really nice as a pen pattern is to do the arch shape with the branch that eventually will turn into our letters N and M. But basically, use some firm, even pressure. Keep the pen almost perpendicular to the paper and see what the tool does. Don't be afraid to make marks that you know, are not gorgeous because right now, the whole idea is to break the pen in. You might want to turn the pen over and do the same thing. Once you've done a whole bunch of the pen patterns and really have a feel for how the tool works, then it's time to learn how the slant, pen angle, and nib widths all affect how you write. Letter size is determined by the nib width that the hand you're doing is usually made of. So a nib width is the widest part of the nib. So this is one nib width. And in the italic alphabet, the base letters are five nib widths high. So I'm going to make a line at five nib widths so that we can see what our base letters are going to be. This is sometimes called the X height because it's the height of the letter X. In the italic alphabet, the ascending letters are three to four nib widths above the baseline. So the H would be here. And the descending letters 
are three to four nib widths below the baseline. So the G in the Roman alphabet, that's very different. Roman letters are made with the base letters only at four nib widths. So let's draw four nib widths. And the nib width and the pen angle, which I'll explain in a moment. So the Roman gives you a very rounded, almost chunky letter. And the ascenders are not quite as high as they are in the Italic alphabet. The Roman alphabet is written without a slant, where the Italic alphabet slants seven degrees. The nib widths are important, but they're impacted by pen angle. So pen angle is the angle at which you hold your pen in relation to the baseline. So right now, the thinnest part, I'm holding it at 90 degrees. If I bisect that 90 degrees, I will have a 45 degree pen angle. And when I bring my stroke down and I bring my stroke across, these two should be the same width. I remember when I was a young calligrapher spending days and weeks doing 45 degree angles to make sure that I could. The italic alphabet is done at a 35 degree angle. So the tip that I want you to remember is that you need to understand the nib widths, the pen angle, and the slant and how the three of them interact to give you the very best possible letters. And happy lettering.